Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you so much for joining me for another amazing interview. Now, today we're moving right along. Remember, make sure to set your notifications. Catch us Sundays, 9 p.m. If you don't see an episode, that means we're on a break and gearing up for the next season. Today, our guest name is Alexis. Alexis, how are you? I'm good, Tony. How are you? Thank you for allowing us to get on here and, you know, spread our purpose and our story. So thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you for being a part. So this is amazing. Now, I remember your name from my mentor.life, but I want to, you know, find out like when did you bump into me online? How did that happen? Oh, um, it was probably around 2018. I bumped on you on Instagram. Um, at that time in my life, I was obviously not in a really good relationship. I was looking for answers and looking for a, a sound voice. Then I signed up for your course, took the course. And honestly, it was COVID that I was really pushed into that my purpose, my purpose of helping other women and men really just not make the same mistakes I did. And my backing and my my foundation is the word of God. Like you could just, I don't care what you tell me. That's what I'm going to stand on. It works. And whoever I coach, you can almost, they almost can sense like, yeah, you definitely have a foundation. So mm. that's, awesome. that's how I bumped into you. <laughs> awesome. So you were in that kind of transition around that time. Now, where do you reside? I currently live in Dallas, but I am from Tampa. So I moved to Dallas at the end of 2019 and then COVID happened. And let me tell you, that was the silver lining for me was I dealt with myself. I know what it is to sit in silence. I know what it is to sit with yourself and deal with yourself. Because if you don't deal with yourself, you can't move forward in life. Mm, that's amazing. Now, Dallas, that's a beautiful city. And I know we have a lot of people in Dallas and I love Dallas personally. And if I were to move, I would move to Dallas. I'm always talking to my wife about just because it's, it's it's growing. And I mean, it's always kind of been big, but it's in you can fly anywhere in the country from there. So anywhere. now you've been there for how long? Uh, Four and a half years we're going on five. November will make five years. It feels like longer than that, but, but it's been a lot. It's great though. It is. It's booming. It's, it's and there's a lot happening here. Um, a lot of migration of other different cultures and people. So it's it's a it's a growing city. I could tell you that for sure. Mm, that's amazing. Now, are you ever considering working with individuals? So, like, do you do life coaching, group coaching, like one on one group coaching? What right now are your main focuses in in your purpose work? Um, my, I'd work better one-on-one, -on -one, uh, just because it is a, it's a spiritual thing for me as well. I tap into my discernment. I tap into a dip, like a deeper sense of hearing is what I call it. So one-on-one -on -one is my preference. Um, I have counseled a few couples. Those have been interesting because again, you're getting two different sides. So you're trying to discern the truth of like, okay, I hear both of you, but what's really the problem? Um, but one-on-one -on -one is where I, I, I thrive if I could say. Mm, okay. That's amazing. And now, so you took the life coach certification, you took mine or you took another one? I took yours. Wow. So you bumped into it and then you joined my mentor.life. Yeah. And the reason why I remember your name is because the developer came to me one time and he sent me a list of like the top 10 coaches and it, the site was new. And at that time, I think you were number one, like with the most bookings. I and think so I remember that. Yeah. How was that? Like, I mean, do you recall how many bookings you did through my mentor.life? Um, during that season, um, because that was when I will say, because everyone was home. So everyone was like, let me just talk to somebody, <laughs> you know. Um, I was averaging like five, six calls a week. Mm. I was busy. Yeah. I was like, all right. <laughs> But I loved it. You know, when you're working in purpose, you can get tired, but you don't, you're not fatigued, if that makes sense. 
Right. But so, that's amazing. That's amazing to do something because at that time, like when you got into it, was that like a second stream of income, like a second thing or had you yeah. lost a job or, or what? No, it was definitely my second stream. Um, and I know the seasons have changed a little bit in terms of coaching, but it's, it's where I thrive. So it is, it's, you know, it's always there available for people, but now I do use my podcast. Um, I just have a servant's heart. That's just what it is. And if I can be a healthier voice for people, because we both know, um, the online space is very negative. So I'm trying to be a voice in the midst of this sea of negativity. Mm. Now, podcasting, when did that find you? So that, that that's also another journey, right? So my podcast currently is called Embrace the Journey because um, that's essentially what life is about, the journey of whatever you are going through. Um, so I've had some guests on there and everything, and it's been wonderful. But what the funny thing is, is I had a podcast prior to this one. It was in like 2021. And I just heard God tell me, just lay it down. So I was just like, Okay, I'll never pick this back up again. You know, it is what it is. And then the end of 2023, um, I just got this really heavy feeling over me. Like, I need you to pick up the mic again. And of course, I'm sitting here like, I don't want to do this. There's too many voices. Who's going to listen to mine? I don't talk about what the other people are talking about. Um, but I can tell you, the numbers don't showcase the DMs I've gotten um, of people just being like, hey, what you said like really changed me. And that right there is how you know you're in purpose. It's not a number. It's about people's lives. Mm. So, What's the format of the podcast? Is it all guests or are there some solo episodes? Both. Um, my, The first season was mainly guest. Uh, this season I'm in now, it's mainly just going to be me. Um, I'm open to guest, but um, now I'm more in the, like the teaching side, like like really giving my wisdom better. I used to kind of hide it, you know, when you have a gift, sometimes you're like, I don't want to like show people it and all this stuff, but I'm in that season where I have to. It's it's time to really showcase what I know. So mm. and with your guests, like what, because I'm sure we may have some people who see the interview who reach out and they want to be interviewed or, you know, submit themselves for the podcast with your guests, what type of stories do you like to tell? Um, anything with your life, self-discovery, um, anything you've healed from, of course, it's important. And also just anything that you're learning through the process. Um, nobody's perfect. We don't have everything figured out, but maybe even in your process, someone can be set free. So, um, anything with that inner work, you know, is what I really want to showcase and the topics that everyone wants to hide from, you know? emotional stuff and mindset and confidence like that's a hard topic sometimes for people to talk about so mm, yeah those are good and I know that there are plethora of people that are going through that journey and want to talk about that want to share that and and the beauty with a podcast is you could do it forever and so you need as many guests as possible it's almost yeah. like everybody with a story that of triumph or tragedy or whatever it is, it's like there's room for everybody. And then everybody's story speaks to somebody different. So it's like, you know, we could listen to somebody and not really resonate, but then listen to the next person is like, whoa, I needed to hear this. So that that's amazing. Now, how would you say it's been? Do you produce it yourself? Like what has been the process with that? Because I mean, it is coaching in a different form, which is very smart to do coaching in more than just one medium. So how has the podcasting been? Um, It's just me. It's honestly, it's for me, it's fun. Um, And the reason I wanted to remain fun is because the minute you start doing something because you are looking for numbers or things like that, you can get really discouraged. So I find it fun and I find it enjoyable that I can, in my studies, I have this great revelation and I'm like, I got to share it. I, I I come to it with joy. I come to it as a teacher and I love it. My guests, it's very organic. It's nine times out of 10, I don't have questions. Like I might have like one opening question, but it's really organic. It's like a conversation that me and you were having because human to human interaction is a conversation. Um, 
when it becomes too formal, it, it's hard for people to let their guard down and to feel safe. So I've had a few guests that tell me they like, Alexis, I've never said this in public, but for some reason, your spirit made me comfortable. So that right there is worth more than money sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just that. So. And that's and that's good that you realize that. And I'm hoping other people who hear this, who are in that space, realize that too. Because even with these interviews, I don't have any questions planned and I didn't send you any questions and I don't have any in front of me. I just like to go with the flow of the spirit because that's when you get the authenticity because the questions are real. Like I'm curious about this question. And so that's a gift in itself that you have and that's amazing that you realize that because i've noticed not many podcasters understand that element of an organic natural conversation and sometimes it's trying to shift one way but if you got that note card and the next question is staying right here or going over there now it's just it's not a real flow so that's a good thing and the same with coaching you know being able to listen and really hear and then respond accordingly instead of just having a preset program and outline that you go with. So that's, that's an amazing thing. Now, when you look at your potential clients in coaching, and then next we'll talk about your potential listeners, what type of clients in coaching do you like to work with? My biggest thing is, are you willing because when it comes to any coach, I, I don't care if it's business related or internal, which is where I focus on, are you really wanting and willing to change? Um, one of my favorite quotes, it's on my uh, my mentor um, site. And it's like, if you want to live differently, you have to live differently. And I think it's such a simple quote, but it's very deep. And I can attest through my own life and my own ups and downs um, that I'm still learning like, oh, like, you have to live differently because even dipping your toes into the kiddie pool of things that you should or you know, used to do, it can really deter from your purpose, from your healing and your blessings. Because who wants to miss out on blessings, right? But sometimes we don't look at ourselves and go, oh, it's me. It's not, an, it's me. So you got to be willing. That's all I ask. Mm. That's it. And that is good because sometimes- as coaches, we'll have a call with a client and they kind of want to argue, you know, they want to debate, you know, and or like make excuses for things versus like being open to the process and just being transparent and sharing and then being open to those questions that can guide them to where they're trying to go. So that is important. Now, as far as your podcast, what type of listeners, what's your ideal listener that you think would enjoy the content you're producing? For my podcast, I'd say it's anyone, one, if you're a believer, you're going to love it. Um, secondly, probably this next person would be someone who is doing the work already. Um, or maybe you were dabbling or like thinking about it. Just anyone who wants change. Um, if you're wanting me, to, if you're wanting to hear someone who's going to agree with your lie, um, my podcast or my coaching ain't it. But if you want to hear the truth, with love and, and compassion, uh, my podcast is it, you know? Um, Cause I think we're flooded too much with what seems like truth, but really it's people's opinions. And it's also their projection of their own pain. And if you don't listen well, you think that it's great advice, but then you're like, there's, there's no fruit in this advice. There's no fruit in saying I'm better off by myself and I don't need nobody and I am who I am. It sounds good, but it's not at the same time. So mm, that's good. That's good. And I could tell by the wisdom that you've been able to gain, that you've been through some things, that you've made your fair share of mistakes. And that's always something to where when you're making your mistakes, when you live in life, you know, you're in the club or you're partying and you know, you're being promiscuous. When you're out there living, people will look at you and assume this man or this woman can never change. So what has that been like with you growing and you coming into this space? Did you have friends from high school or, you know, I don't or college or whatever that were like, who, who are you? And 
more, aren't you the person that said this or did this, you know, 10 years ago? Like, did you have to go through any of that or any people questioning you or did it just seem like everyone evolved with you? Um, no, not everyone has gone with me. And I think once I accepted that, I was like, okay, this is just the calling. This is just what it is. It's going to be lonely. Um, but it's part of it. It's a sacrifice. Um, I can't name one person from my past that can handle the Alexis of today. I don't have a single person and it makes sense. They knew me in a space where I was a people pleaser. I, I didn't have a backbone. So of course, who wouldn't want to be around me back then? But now one of my issues was speaking up, setting boundaries and standing on what they say. They stand on business. That's the phrase now. Um, now that I do that, oh, I'm too much. Oh, you've changed. And it's like, mm, I'm actually becoming who I was supposed to be. But being around you and everyone else, I couldn't be that. So if that's encouragement for anyone like that is going, kind of building a platform and, and growing, it might be a, a ship of just you. That's it. Mm. And you got to ride it yourself. Mm. And now what about like in your, like what's your, your culture like? Like what when you grew up with your family, you know, is it, did you grow up in the church and just kind of rebelled or is this new to like, your family as well. So the funny thing is so many people think I did grow up in church because of my wisdom, but I didn't. Um, I'm, you know, I'm from a Latin background. So of course, like in the words, Jesus and like, you know, um, Good Friday was a thing, but I didn't know much. And I had, a, both my parents are still married. So I grew up in a healthy home, but their wisdom wasn't enough for where I was going. So of course I made mistakes. Um, going through college and things like that. I am the first of my family to do a lot of things. So that comes with a lot of mistakes. And at the time that I had my personal encounter with God, I was in shambles. Um, I didn't know I was looking for him, but I did know I needed something. And he met me in the midst of my heartbreak and I knew it was him. And ever since that day, it was 2017 or 18. Um, it's been a journey of revealing my gifts, my knowledge, my wisdom. This is not from me. Like Alexis by herself, I have no wisdom. But I stay close. I stay close to him. And even in my failures, he reminds me and gives me wisdom. And at that point in time, when you know better, you have to do better. And that's just what I've been on. And I stumble sometimes. And when I do stumble, I let people know, listen, I'm not perfect. You're looking at a progressing person, but what I can give you is some advice that is, that might change your life, mm -hmm. you know? So that's good. And it's one thing, like when you grow up in the church and I always enjoy meeting people who didn't necessarily grow up in the church. Like, you know, I grew up in the church. My dad was an assistant pastor for maybe seven years. And then he became a pastor of his own church for like seven years. And so I was around that and then just chose to rebel and do the wrong thing, be like the prodigal son. But it's always interesting for me when I meet people who found God, you know, as an adult and started to walk that path and learn, and you still stumble and fall and get back up. Now, now, and one thing too, is like, I'm a Christian, I'm a devout Christian, but I'm able to still talk to people, so to speak, that may not be believers, but I don't tone down my belief, but I can speak their language. And how has that been with clients, friends, family? Have you, you know, standing on the Bible ever offended somebody or run somebody off because they're like, I want to hear all this Bible stuff, all this Christian stuff? Oh, that's, that's part of it too. Um, because when you do stand on something, you're going to offend somebody. I, I've had to let go of that worry of like, I can't fear men is what they say. The minute you start fearing men, you're probably not going to do what you're called to do. So um, with my family, it's funny because I'm the youngest of four. So whenever I go home, um, I'm teaching them. They listen now. It's It's so interesting that me being away, and now when I go back, 
they actually listen to what I say now. It's crazy. Um, but even with people, I live in the world, like I tell people, I have, you know, I do follow the rules and principles of God. And I also live in the world too. And it's a constant battle of like, this is the truth. I know we live in the world and I know what's going on, but we probably are like how we are because we're not following the rules. And I never tell people, I'm like, I'm not telling you to change. I'm not even forcing you to believe, but this is where I stand. And this is the result of my life as me standing on these truths. There's a peace, there's a joy that you can't understand. Um, I ain't gotta worry about half the things that people have to worry about because I follow the principles. So, mm. And you said something earlier that I'm still you know, unpacking in my mind when you said, if you want to live different, you have to live different. And if, if that was the correct way you said it? Yes. Okay. And so to me, what I think of when I hear that is I think about how I may be coaching somebody and they're like, hey, you know, I want to be married and and I want to have this and have that and like this white picket fence and this great thing, but they're living in fornication and they're giving away the milk and cookies, but yet they want to be able to bake a cake or what have you. And they don't have the ingredients because they're giving it all away. And is that kind of what you mean when you say, if you want to live different, you got to live different, like for your life to look different, you're going to have to do different. Absolutely. And cause I've done it all. I've done, I've done it backwards. I've tried to skip steps. Um, I've done all the things and it never worked. It never worked. And until you sit down and really look at yourself because, and I understand it's hard because everybody, you turn to your left and your right and everyone is doing it out of order. It doesn't. And, and then you have some people that are like, oh, we've been great. It's worked for us, but we don't see 10, 15 years down the road from them yet either. But I know for me and, and some, sometimes it's, your, it's a testimony. Your testimony is what helps people. I've done everything out of order. It never brought me peace. Now that I've done certain things, I've gotten back on track. I'm full. There's no area where I can say, I don't just have, I don't have it anymore. Nope. It's all, it, when you live differently, when you realize, nope, there has to be boundaries. Because the reality is when you share a, your body or your life with someone, that's serious. And there's serious um, consequences to it. And I was just tired of the consequences. Mm, that's 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 a lesson that I feel like every single person has to live, you know, and live through it to understand it and then get to the place where you're really ready to make a change. And that's not, you know, it's not easy. It's a progress. I mean, a process, but it's something that if you don't commit to it, then you never see the results. And that's amazing that, you turn your shame into, you know, God's praise, you know, and, and you're using your story or the pain and allowing it to you know, birth purpose because so often people make mistakes and they come to a place where they're ashamed of who they've been and how they've been living, but they're also insecure about changing and becoming a different person because they fear the judgment of people saying who do you think you are did you have that moment in the beginning like when you got ready to take the life coach certification did you hear that voice that said who do you think you are and who's gonna listen to you oh absolutely and the voice is still there it, it never really goes away but I do have the power and the knowledge now that I can turn down the volume like, I don't have to believe it's lie because that voice only is going to come about when you're trying to change something. The voice never is on when you live in, in the very things that you shouldn't be doing. It's quiet. Can't even hear it. But the minute you even think, you know, I need to start changing my life. Boom. The voice is like, you really think you can? Who's going to listen to you? Come on now. Look at you. Look at your past. And that's when you... I always tell people, you have the power to silence that voice. And the only reason you hear it is because you're going, you're changing, you're pivoting. You're finally making the decision to look, you know, the other way, pivot, repent. It's, 
but it doesn't go away. I, I don't, I, I won't sit here and lie. It, I hear it every so often, but it's only when I'm like reaching more people and more influence. I'm like, oh, I, re I recognize this voice. Okay. But <laughs> it, it comes with the territory. I see. Now, question for you. You're coaching and you're doing podcasts. Have you been shown anything else that you may be doing in the future, whether it be the near future or, you know, two, three years from now, as far as like hosting events or online courses or group coaching retreats? Is there anything else that's kind of been on your heart that you're thinking about rolling out? Not yet. I know it will be revealed to me in due time i have been getting little nuggets from people random strangers or random followers that they're like you need to like do a a, a group study a bible study and i'm kind of like is that what you, is that what's next god i don't know but i i think something group wise whatever that is i, I believe that's coming soon so mm -hmm. i'm just waiting for the details you know the the go you know the full vision but i do sense that Awesome. Well, I know you're going to have a, a flood of messages. And, and do you have a, a website up currently or? Um, I don't have a website. I do have. You have mymentor.life? Yes, I have that. Okay. And that's, it's mymentor.life forward slash your name. Yes. Alexis. And then how do you pronounce and spell your last name? It's Forteza. F-O-R-T-E-Z-A. Awesome. So we're going to put the link in the description box so people can click that and go and book a session with you. And then I'll get any other contact information that you want to share with us, an email address or what have you, or your Instagram, just wherever you are on social where people can come and support. And your podcast name is Embrace the Journey. Yes, it is. And is it like embrace the journey with Alexis or by Alexis or just embrace the journey? Just embrace the journey. It's on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Okay, awesome. So everybody go subscribe to the podcast. And especially if you're an author or a coach or you got a story to tell, reach out to see if it's a fit for you to be on Alexis podcast because, I mean, we got 365 days in a year and got a lifetime left. So you know, you can line up some guests from this as well. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of the tribe, just being around like-minded people and continuing to, to feed yourself while also feeding others. So that's a blessing and we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate it. Awesome. To everybody watching, remember, set your calendars, make sure you subscribe, you hit the notification button connect with Miss Alexis and all our other wonderful guests. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.